What we're going to talk about today is this very smooth surface that's at the end of the bone, and that's called articular cartilage. So articular cartilage on this arthroscopic view is this incredibly smooth surface that allows us to run, jump, and play for decades. It's got the lowest coefficient of friction known to man. And what is it made of? It's made of cells, which are chondrocytes. And these chondrocytes surround themselves with a matrix. And the matrix is at least 80% water and about 20-30% proteins, specifically something called type 2 collagen. And this incredibly hydrophilic material allows us to glide for decades, running, jumping, and cutting without breaking down. In fact, there are stories, and in fact, good studies, of Scandinavian runners who run for 70 and 80 years. And as long as you don't break this, you can run on it forever. However, once it breaks, it's a real problem. So, you know, if you break your bones, or if I break your bones as an orthopedic surgeon, we can always set them. And we can, you will make new bone cells and form new bones. And if I cut your skin as a surgeon, you will certainly form new skin. We do it every day. But once you break articular cartilage, it's been known for generations that these cells do not have the ability to migrate, do not have the ability to replicate or to heal. And there's a very poor blood supply, so there's no healing tissue that comes in. And what really happens is when this cartilage breaks, there's an inexorable cascade of events. First, chemical, where the cells that were inside those break up and more enzymes come out and break the cartilage around it. And if you leave it alone, you'll then get mechanical breakdown where that, where that stuff starts to rub the other surface of the shin bone and wear that out, and you end up with basically end-stage arthritis. So end-stage arthritis is what you see here on this picture. That means bone on bone. And you know, if we look throughout, the wor throughout all of the United States at all of us, and we follow us and take x-rays throughout life, 50% of us are going to end up with osteoarthritis in the seventh and eighth decade. However, if you have a meniscus tear from an arthritic injury, or worse, an ACL injury, you can see how the curve whoop, gets shifted to the left. Hopefully that will still work. Gets shifted to the left. And in fact, it costs over $185 billion per year to treat arthritis in the United States. And that's why we're so interested in trying to make a difference in articular cartilage. So what's the profile of these patients? We're not talking about older patients or my grandparents that have terrible arthritis. We're talking about young, active, healthy patients who are in the prime of their life athletically, anywhere from age 20 to 50, and they want to be more active. And over 80,000 Americans have treatable injuries to the articular cartilage. So what did we do? For the longest time, we would just tell them to take pills, take aspirin, take Advil, take a leave. We would give them a shot of cortisone. We might go in if it was clicking and locking and clean out some stuff, but that didn't really make this cartilage normal. It just took out the locking mechanism. And ultimately, everybody goes on to take this terribly worn surface and replace it with metal and plastic, what you've heard of as a total knee replacement, which does get rid of the pain, but it doesn't really return normal function. So somewhere along the 90s, we started to ask the question, is it possible that we could return patients to real play, pain-free, and, and avoid arthritis? I mean, you know, we're not really salamanders. We can't regrow limbs, or can we? So in 1994, this gentleman, good-looking gentleman from Sweden to the left of me, is Lars Peterson. And he was the first person to figure out this crazy idea that you could take chondrocytes from a person's knee, you could take those cells, isolate them in a lab, convince them to grow. Remember, we said they never grow in adulthood. Convince them to grow, suspend them in an auger, and send them back, and put them back into that same patient, and it would express the phenotype of articular cartilage, meaning it would start to look like real articular cartilage. And his work has been the, the, the thing that inspired myself and hundreds and thousands of other doctors around the world to continue to work on articular cartilage to this day. And this is what began my exploration. So um, a new paradigm has really developed. We don't want to just be carpenters. We want to be an orthopedic biosurgeon. We would like to actually rebuild the joint naturally and see if we could gain peak performance and avoid long-term arthritis, not just get rid of pain. This is one of my favorite slides. I mean, if you look at this, we all have different perspectives. 
And I think that you realize that in this picture. But as a scientist, we also have very different perspectives. So when we talk about cartilage repair, the orthopedic surgeon is looking to make a new smooth white surface. And the scientist wants to not just do that. They want to match the normal biomechanical and biochemical realities of true cartilage so that when you get a white surface, it's going to last for the next 20 years. Otherwise, it's still going to wear out, and you'll need a replacement. And society epidemiologically wants to avoid arthritis and avoid that cost and lower the cost of health care in our seventh and eighth decade. But truly, the only thing that matters to me in the end is what is the patient's perspective. And when my athletes or my workers get injured and they cannot work and make a living and they cannot perform to their fullest, their only question is, when can I play again? They don't care about the ultrastructure, the histology, or the smoothness. They want to know when can my symptoms go away and when can I do what I love to do. And that's the perspective I try to keep now as we try to look to the future to gain a little better than just relief of pain. So now there's a bunch of things we can do. The first thing is Dr. Stedman from Vail, Colorado, for the first time in the late 80s, thought to ourselves, look, there's, we all have stem cells in our marrow. So right under this broken cartilage where this bone is, there's a whole bunch of stem cells in those marrows that could turn into something. And he decided to try this little idea called microfracture, where you'd make little holes in the bone, and those, the blood fills this with a blood clot, and in the blood clot are multipotent cells that can turn into other things. And in fact, they can turn into a smooth white surface. Unfortunately, as we see in this picture, oh, I'm sorry, can we go, yeah, we see here, the cartilage that comes here ultra-structurally doesn't look like real cartilage. It's very disorganized. It's really scar cartilage. It's fibrous tissue. And so once the athletes did well for two years, 80% good to excellent results, but at five years, they started to wear out, and 50% of them would start to have a poor result. So now we have new opportunities that we can do in the United States today, and we'll talk about the one that I do most, articular cartilage. You can use donor grafts, and, but ACI is what we're going to talk about to try to make a more normal-looking cartilage. So articular cartilage transplant, which was what Lars taught us all about in 1995, is this two-step procedure. We take athletes and we put them into, arthroscope their knee, put a little scope inside, and we take three tic-tac-sized biopsies of their cartilage. That's a quick procedure. They're off crutches in a week. They're back in business. But the cells go up to a lab in Boston, and they can clone 12 million of these chondrocytes. The next time we bring them back is in a month. And in a month later, or, two, or a year later, whenever they want to come back, you do an open surgery. And like this cartoon shows, you get rid of the bad cartilage, and you actually just sew a patch like you would over your pants. You sew a, a patch with very, very fine suture. The patch is made of either, I'm sorry, periosteum. I lost it. There we go. OK, the patch is made of periosteum, which is the lining of your bone, or a collagen patch from Europe that we get now. And uh, then we sew it, and we inject the cells that get flown in the night before and have to be used within 24 hours. We inject those underneath, and we can actually get reasonable cartilage. So we published a study, uh, Lars had published his original thing in 1994, but the FDA doesn't, be doesn't believe that Swedes and Europeans are humans, so they got to test it on Americans. So we had to do it all over again. And on this study, we took patients, I'm sorry, I'm not sure why this is going. We took patients who had already failed microfracture and had that terrible result, and they were doing terribly, and then we did the ACI on them. And as you can see, at four years, not only did we get good pain relief, but we got statistically significant improvement in quality of life scales, sports, return to sports scales, and activities of daily living. So this 20-center study with my friends all around the country in the U.S. and Canada has been very successful in getting it approved here. But it's important for the athlete to know that this takes time. You're taking this cell, which is basically a baby chondrocyte, just like when you were in utero and your mother, and you're sticking it in the, under this patch. So at first, this, this looks like fluid under a patch. At 11 months, it starts to look like cartilage, but it still doesn't look like the normal cartilage. And it's almost 19 months later where this becomes normal articular cartilage, which can durably stand up to jumping, running, skiing, anything you want to do. And most importantly, Lars has shown us, as well as Tom Minus at Harvard, that this is a durable repair. It will last over 8 to 15 to 20 years. So those doing well at two years, 80% of people, now 92% of them are doing well at 
15 years. So we're getting there. So you might say, we now can return people to competition. These are two of my patients. One was a former soccer player in college who had to give up soccer, in fact, all athletics, because she couldn't walk without pain. And now she's a bodybuilder and a gym teacher. And then this is my greatest patient ever, who's had two transplants over a 10-year period. And, uh, and each time has come back uh, with different parts of her cartilage, because she fell off bikes and triathlons. And each time she's gotten back to running these triathlons. So you might think that the journey's over. But the fact is, there's still a conundrum. These cells are extremely expensive. And as we know, the cost of healthcare is rising through the United States and all over the world. And a lot of countries in their health systems are starting to say, hey, we cannot afford to help this athlete get back by spending thirty dollars to $70,000 on these cells. And this may happen in the US in the future. So now the search goes on. We're trying to find a way to stimulate the body's own chondrocytes, the body's own cells, to migrate and heal just like these do, the ones that we get from the lab, so that we can avoid this gigantic cost. And that's what we'll spend the last few minutes on. So there's a new concept called augmented microfracture, which started in Canada and by some of my associates that I work with in, uh, in India uh, now and in Europe. And they basically do a microfracture. But as you can see, instead of just having a retracted clot where the blood sits there, you mix it with a, with a material. I'm sorry. This is going crazy here. We go back. There we go. You mix it with a material. It could either be chitosan or donated uh, cartilage, something that acts as a scaffold. Chitosan comes from lobsters and shellfish, believe it or not. But it acts as a scaffold to help organize the clot and hopefully get a better repair. We've been working in a group of scientists, myself, a group from Israel and Italy, on aragonite. Believe it or not, sea coral can really help you grow cartilage. This is very inexpensive. You can harvest it from the sea. A small piece of coral can make thousands of plugs. So if you look, the ultrastructure of coral looks almost exactly like bone on an electron microscope. And when we put this plug, which is aragonite on the bottom, and aragonite with hyaluronic acid, which is part of what you normally have in your joint fluid, in the top, chondro chondrocytes or, or cartilage cells are attracted to this, and bone cells are attracted to this, and you get an incredible recreation of the normal cartilage and bone unit. So the first patient we did was in, uh, in Slovenia, a competitive cyclist who could no longer compete because of this worn cartilage. And in, and in there, as you can see, they, took, they opened him up. My uh, cohorts in Slovenia and Italy opened him up and placed these two plugs. And now you hope that those are going to turn into cartilage. And if we look at the, at the x-rays over time, you could easily see the plugs day one. But all the way through 12 months, by 12 months, they're almost disappeared. And in fact, the bone is almost normal. And if we do an MRI, more importantly, look, here's articular cartilage, and it's starting to grow back. And at 12 months, we have nearly 4 millimeters of cartilage and normal-looking bone, something we never thought we'd be able to do. And if we look at the animal studies we did, where you could actually take these pieces and harvest them and put them in an MRI, this is a T2 mapping, which looks just like normal cartilage. Here's the normal. Here's where the implant was. Very similar. And on the histology, a beautiful glow of articular cartilage, and more importantly, recreating that normal subchondral bone that lets you have ability to have shock absorption so this new cartilage won't just wear out. And now I just want to, you can hit that movie if you would, please. Um, nope, go back, please. You got to go on to the impact thing. You got to put your arrow on there and hit it. Yeah, you go. So a group, in, a group of my friends in, uh, in the Netherlands, in Utrecht, Dan Saris and his group, are working on a one-stage cellular repair. We, an athlete can come off the, uh, with an injury. You can go in and arthroscopically take out that bad cartilage. The patient then goes to the recovery room. And the cartilage doesn't get thrown away. We take that bad cartilage to the lab. And in the lab, they will mince it up into very, very fine pieces. So chondrocytes is what we were using. Chondrons are chondrocytes inside their matrix. And you take these chondrons and put them in a liquid vial along with stem cells donated from other human beings. Stem cells act like a little pharmacy to bring the growth factors to help stimulate this cartilage. They then mix it with a fibrin glue and go back in the same day and spray paint it on. Just an amazing thing. And they started this study now in Utrecht. And they've done about 10 patients, and they're, they're on their way. We're really excited to see these repairs. And lastly, what if you didn't just try to recreate cartilage, but what if you could rebuild in the lab a joint that was genetically appropriate for that patient? So Jos Malda, who is, uh, works with Dan in Utrecht, 
and his group are working on bioprinting. You know that we have bioprinting all over the world now that can bioprint plastics and metals and machines and maybe even make a whole car someday. Well, believe it or not, if instead of those, uh, those substrates you put in cells and proteins into a printer, they're able to work now and make shapes that look like a normal joint and the cells in there maintain the original cell genetics of the human being who donated them. So this is extremely exciting. This is, of course, way off in the future, just in the lab right now. I just want to tell you that there's so much more going on in our field. There's exciting elements in evolution in stem cells, in the use of your own cells, in new scaffolds. But the key is to try to get people to be able to return to play and have normal cartilage. Thank you very much.